And the good part is on that wonderful day, there was standing room only in the main sanctuary. And I would say to you as a Wesleyan that my heart was strangely warm. Not because of anything except that the message that my father gave to the world was two things. He loved God and he loved the people. And they knew that he cared. So after this is all over and he had requested, let's just don't do anything really big or just low key. My mom got this feeling of, I, gotta, I have to do something. What if nobody remembers? And I said, Mother, he lived the life that continues on in all of us. That's how the world remembers. Goes, yeah, I knew you were going to say that, but I ordered a column burial. I don't know if you know what a column burial is. It's a I'm thinking this is probably wrong and wrong of me to say, but I think it's something for regrets. People who didn't do a big thing and didn't do a big burial and a graveside and tombs. Anyway, it's a it, it's a wall with little six inch slots about this big, and there's several walls like that, and there's a little drawer, and you. Anyway, there's a plaque out on the front of it that says G. F. Zimmerman Jr. Father, husband, father. And people remember, though, since that time, and it's been many years, I can't even remember when now, but people still come up to me and say, your dad was a great man. He was a wonderful teacher. He was a professor at Florida Southern College. He was a real estate broker, a general contractor. Even the last little thing he did after retiring so many times, I can't count. He was a loving, caring locksmith. <coughs> Have you hugged your locksmith lately? I don't know where it comes from, except that when they sing, I want to live like that, he did. And they knew he was a Christian in two ways. His love and the love of his family. Luke writes down the words that to me express an urgency for us to understand. Okay, here's your test. Pop quiz. Hold it up if you brought them. If you didn't, we put it on the screen. And it's working this morning. It is the ninth chapter, verses 51 through 62. <coughs> It includes two different stories. So here we go. As the time approached for him to be taken up into heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into the Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. You get it, right? Samaritan, Jerusalem. Samaritans dislike Jews. Jews live in you get it. And when the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to rain down fire upon the people? That's kind of what they said. But Jesus turned to them and rebuked them, and they went to another village. You get that part too, right? When we are disciples of the kingdom, when we possess power that we don't even know we have. So don't be doing stuff to us that you might regret. But that's not what Jesus said either, is it? Then Jesus told them, you got the wrong story still. Stick with me, learn from me. And as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, foxes have no holes, 
and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And he said to one other man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service to the kingdom of God. It is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It, sometimes I have a hard time understanding the responses that Jesus gives. But that response was, there's an urgency that is lurking for us to actively pursue and share the gospel. Don't be offended, but I'm going to tell you a little joke story. The devil called a board meeting and he says, I, I want us to come up with a new strategy here of how do we raise havoc on earth. And one of the first suggestions was, let's just tell them there is no such thing as hell. Hmm. You know, the one that won it was the suggestion that says, let's just tell them they don't have to hurt. Think about it. You don't have to hurry. There's no urgency. There's no worry. Wait a minute, that rhymes. Don't worry. Don't hurry. But that's not the words of Jesus. Did you see what was written in the bulletin this morning? I wanted you to think that I had taken my red pencil and written the word urgency on there and then circled it two or three times. I cannot tell a lie. I had the computer do that. But the same is true. It, it is about urgency. Luke tells a story of three excuses to the urgency of kingdom acceptance and faith in action. Let me go bury my father. Let me go tend to my family. Excuses. It's like this. Sisters and brothers. The world is going to place things in the way and we're going to allow things that deter and distract from our mission. God places a ministry at each of our laps. Things that we can do, will do, should do, are ready to do, it's our expertise. And God just says, here. There's an urgency of you saying, I got it, boss. I can do this. I can share these gifts that I have. And Jesus calls us to focus on the kingdom. And you've heard that old cliche, never look back. That's what Jesus was talking about with the guy plowing. What happens when you look back and you're plowing? Whoops. I'm now doing circles instead of lines. What happens when you're driving in a car and instead of glancing in the rearview mirror, you turn and look back? Or this way. Look out on the highway because you're not focusing on where God wants you to be. True story, there is a Dear Abby column and the person writes, Dear Abby, I am the most heartbroken person in the world. She says, my entire life I've found ways, I've focused on ways to be in different places and, and, and be there for other people. But I didn't visit my parents. And they sat at home and they loved me for who I am. And I visit them now. Well, at least I visit their grave. If you think about it, is regret the opposite of virgin? The gospel story that Luke tells us 
says in no uncertain terms that there is an urgency to love. And I might add to that, there seems to be no end to regret. A, a bashful young man who are trying to express to his sweetheart regret of not being able to show his affection the way that he would like to do on the inside. So he prepares this little poem for her. Oh, that I were an octopus, that I could wrap all eight arms around you and show you my love. And quickly his, his witty sweetheart says, don't worry about having eight arms, just put better use to the two that you have. There is a sense of urgency to everything we do in life. Luke is calling us to make life changes, isn't he? But one might argue that there's a difference between excuses and reasons. Truth be known that no matter whether you call them reasons or excuses, it is things that get in your way from doing the things that God has called you to do. And God is trying to give you the courage to jump over the hurdles that are in your path. And sometimes you allow the world to get in the way of your ministry. There are tragic stories always in the limelight. Don't feel special. There's a spotlight always on things like drug abuse and relation, relationship abuse and financial ruin. You don't have to experience those to be close to them. You name it, the world has experience for you if you just choose to let the world run your life. But Jesus said, don't look behind you. Look to the future. Focus on the future. That's the urgent direction and the urgent decision. Candy and I, we have one of those machines at home that hook to our television. Well, actually, it looks hard. Anyway, it, it allows us to record things so that when we finally get home, we can still watch things. It doesn't allow for much sleep, but the one that has intrigued us is, is this story about the Scottish Jacobites. They're the revolutionists who were upset when England and Scotland combined the throne and threw out the honored king of Scotland. And the Jacobites then were the revolution who wanted to overthrow this and bring the rightful king back to Scotland. Okay. Now you don't have to watch that whole series because that's all it's really about. But the majority clan leader, Mackenzie, in last night's series, he dies. And he has a warrior brother and they're... Uh, they're not together. They're estranged. Still brothers, but they're estranged. And there were so many bad things between the two of them. And right there at the end of the program, Mackenzie dies while his brother is trying to get the courage to tell him that he loved him. Let's settle the things before you die. And as he's pouring his heart out Tears from this warrior are coming down his cheeks. He looks over, his brother's dead. Urgency is of the essence. And we can find examples everywhere of what Luke is trying to tell us, what Christ was trying to share with us. And the question is, how far do we sink before we realize there's no other way but up? When do you finally say it's time for me to control my life in the way that Jesus wants me to do that? Here's a name. If the opposite of a person is regret. Judas Iscariot. You can think what you want about Judas. I really don't believe that Judas wanted the death of Jesus. He just wanted change in a way that 
He didn't know how to make it happen. Yes, he was part of God's plan. Yes, there are theories of whether we'll see him in heaven because he was doing what God told him to do. And there's some things that we don't need to know and some things I'm just happy not knowing. But you see, it's a sense of urgency over a sense of regret. Jesus is calling us to that sense of urgency. And not even once do I remember, do I recall, have I studied, do I have I read where Jesus said to someone, just go home and think about it. Come back tomorrow. When he was calling his disciples, they were on the beach, they were tending to their nets, and Jesus said, follow me, and what did they do? They left their nets drying on the beach and their boats. Oh, for the love of a four-wheeler and a trailer that could have taken with their boat with them anyway. They left all of that, turned around and followed Jesus. No procrastination, no hesitation. Christ timeless message has always been the same like Nike. Just do it. It's urgent that you understand the love. It's urgent that you share the love. We are created as creatures of habit. And it seems now in this phase of my life, the older I get, the harder it is to change. So if you're not already changed to a sense of urgency, start working on it. Because procrastination and hesitation will set in. My previous life to becoming your shepherd was that in the business world and management. And, and that's the reason I relate so much to Zig Ziglar. He was one of these, um, he was a, a management guru who shared messages on, on positive thinking, a little bit like Norman Vincent Peale. He wrote a book called See You at the Top. Now he was already a prolific writer and he was already a bestseller and, and he just knew this was going to be a success. And so one of the things that he put in his book is, I've been sitting here in my office writing this book for so long, I've gained weight and I am 202 pounds. And I'm saying to you that by the time you read this book, I'm going to be 165 pounds. And he finished the book and he sent it to the publisher and he realized, I'm still 202 pounds. They're going to open my book and they're going to, they're going to want to know. Am I truthful in what I say? Is the urgency that I preach to you the urgency that God has placed upon me and the urgency that I'm taking action on. And by the time the first reader opened the first page of his book, he was 165 pounds. He was committing himself to a promise of urgency, which is what Luke was committing us to when he said to us, this sense of urgency is a commitment to the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. Successful living is about purpose. Focus upon the purpose of your life and, and commit your whole future towards it. Don't look back. Look forward. Our world is in dire need of someone to receive the urgent truth that Christ has revealed to them to reveal to the world. Did you get that? That sense of urgency to be placed in the, on the table in front of you to take up and share. Don't hold on to it. Take it up and share it. Souls are shriveling up because people believe with all their hearts that no one really cares. Young people are taking uncharted paths in a new direction and not necessarily in a positive direction. Down is rapidly spiraling to become the new up. And the addictions and the abuses in our world are catastrophic. There is an urgency to the message that Jesus shared. The mother and her four-year-old son were traveling. And you know, there's just so long that a little child can be patient. How many times have you heard this? Are we there yet? 
Are, are we there yet? And the mother heard, hears this for just so many times and she's frustrated. She finally says, son, we have 90 miles to go. Don't ask me that question anymore. So he's a little down and he's very quiet for a long time. And then his eyes open and he looks up and he leans over to his mom and he says, Mom? She says, yes, dear. Well, I still be four years old when we get there. <laughs> what is the urgency in your life? If it is becoming Christ-centered, you'll experience purpose in the direction of satisfaction. I think that's profound. I, I think that's something that I put together that's profound. The world always gives to you plenty of excuses and distractions and you can rely on the world if you want a go-nowhere life. Becoming in service to Christ is the urgency that the world needs to react to, to hear of, to deal with. Can you say to the people in your life what we sang this morning? I want to read to you that one line again. I want to live like that. This is where I stand. Recklessly abandoned. Never holding back. So that everything I say and do points to being Jesus even to a few. I want to live like that. Y'all what you want to say?